What is most useless item you carry with you all the time? Stamp card for a cafe whose food gave me diarrhea. My wallet. The duck is my broker's gonna do. Buy something? A $2 bill that I'm never going to spend. They're not even rare. It just looks cool. I carry one of these too. My grandpa gave it to me before he passed away. My wallet was stolen about a year and a half ago and then somehow, miraculously, found and returned to me. With the $2 bill still inside. Guitar pick. I don't play guitar. But hey one time you may be at a party when some guy is about to play the guitar and can't find his pick and so you give it to them and anyway, here's Wonderwall. Two quarters. When I was a kid. Before cell phones existed. My mum would make me take two quarters with me every day just in case I had to call her while she was at work. I'm not sure if it's out of habit or because it makes me feel safe. Like my mum is one call away. But every morning I still grab two quarters before I leave for work. Asterisk asterisk edit asterisk asterisk didn't expect this comment to blow up. Just want to add that everyone should go call their mum and tell them that you love them. One Pokemon card, Sharpedo. My son told me he was the best. And to keep the card with me in case I ever needed to battle. So I keep it in my pocket at all times. Tiny black light on my keychain. No legitimate use for it whatsoever. I joined the Navy 10 years ago and we were all told about the tradition of challenge coins and why you carry them. Basically, you carry a coin and in the event of a night at the bar, getting a sheet tasking, etc. You can pull out your coin and whoever doesn't have one, has the lowest rank one gets sheet on, has to do the task, pays the tab whatever. Well, 10 years in I have never actually pulled my coin, nor has anyone else ever pulled coins on me. So, I carry a heavy as sheet secretary of defense coin in my wallet. Looking for all the world like a dumb 15 year old with a condom in my wallet because it is a round protrusion in the leather for no damn reason. But I also am terrified of the day I do get challenged and don't have it and have to pay a $300 bar tab. The second you get rid of it, it'll cost you everything you have. It's the same reason I hang on to my wife. Still have the key to my old office on my keychain. I haven't worked there in three years and will never be back. It's a really big key that tends to get in the way. I might get rid of it one of these days but probably won't. The starter key to a 1960s Swiss made cog wheel train that can climb up Pikes Peak. A picture of my high school girlfriend who passed away 10 years ago. I've been in multiple relationships since then. But this is the only thing I can't seem to let go of from any of the relationships. Edit, a few people are asking why I keep it. And how partners since then have reacted. Most didn't care as they are mature enough to not be jealous by something that is simply a memory of a person who is gone forever. One crazy ex tried to burn it though. As for why I keep it. Sometimes I struggle to remember her face. And that makes me feel like a shitty person. A straw wrapper my husband gave me once and jokingly told me never to lose. It's been four years and I haven't yet. Does it spit some good rhymes? The key to the home I grew up in. I was so proud when they gave me a key to the house in 7th grade so I could let myself in whenever I needed to. They changed the locks years ago. So this key is now completely useless. But I can't bring myself to take that key off of my key ring. I will always carry it to remind myself of my family. A plastic snail that I found in my school parking lot. His name is Aaron. And Aaron lives in my bassoon case. He has played with me all over the country. I set him on my stand during concerts. He's very well behaved. And never interrupts the concert. Glasses cleaning cloth. I usually just use the bottom of my shirt. Edit. I leave for class and come home to nearly 9k karma and silver. Hell yeah. Weird rocks. Every single bag I have has at least two in them. Edit. Wow y'all really like rocks. When I was in Arizona two years ago I bought a metal spider sculpture off of an old man outside a dingy side of the road Wild West Traveler's Stop. As a receipt he gave me a wallet sized printed picture of him sitting proudly atop a horse. With a big white cowboy hat and he signed the back and wrote the dollar amount. I still have his picture in my wallet today. Those loyalty cards that were forced on me when I was unable to refuse and I still keep in my wallet but deep down I know I'm never really going to use. House key. My lock is electronic. I carry a rock shaped like an egg. I found it after my son died I always called him, my best egg. A compact mirror in my purse. My parking pass for the hospital the day that my daughter was born. Appendix. Like seriously. Just take it and let me have two weeks off work please. I still carry my Blockbuster account card in my wallet. FYI were in from they closed down around 10 years ago but you never know. My old driver's driver's license. 
never took it out of my wallet. Pointless in the sense it hasn't got a practical use. But a little letter my fiance wrote for me when we were gonna spend time away as I was away for work and she was staying home. I keep it everywhere I go so if I feel low I'll pull it out and give it a cheeky read. Emotional baggage. A small marble turtle I named Harold in December of 2015 my family went to the Bahamas where I got Harold for $2 and I immediately put him in my pocket. A few days later I had forgotten he was there. But I was like nah can't take him out now he's already been there for 3 days. Flash forward to now and I still keep him in my pocket always. Almost getting to 4 years. If he's not in my pocket I have get really anxious and worried about him. Even though he's inanimate. Edit, thanks for the silver. Also here's a pic of Harold. A stuffed bunny, suggested to me by my therapist to help with my anxiety. The idea is that when I feel anxious I can talk to the bunny. I can pet the bunny. I can squeeze or throw it or whatever. It gives me a safe way to deal with my feelings. Luckily, my mental health has greatly improved over the last year. So I don't find that I need it anymore. But I still carry it around. I don't carry it with me every day. But I'm a server in a restaurant. One time a kid left this little tiny Optimus Prime figure on the table. I went to bust the table and saw the little figure. Threw it in my apron and it's been there almost ever since. That was about two years ago. The almost is kind of awesome. 2. One time at work I pulled a check out of my apron and Optimus stealthily took flight. I didn't notice till the end of the shift. Freaking out. I searched the whole entire restaurant. Never found him. Saga over. Until a few weeks later. My co-worker heard me talking about it. I come by on a day off for a drink and he brings me the drink and tells me to follow him. Sitting on top of our bulletin board high on the top right corner, my Optimus ducking prime. I'm elated and thank him profusely. I come to find out someone on the shift I lost him found it. They didn't keep it or throw it away. They placed him in a pen cup. Someone saw it and moved it to the expo window, etc. For a few weeks people kept moving it and I never saw it. Until my awesome co-worker heard me talking about it and reunited me with my tiny useless talisman. You a real one, Cam. Pads. I don't have periods anymore because of a medical issue but I still bring them in case there is anyone that needs them. I have a coupon expired on the 30th of June 2014 for 3 yuan off of a large cocoa milk tea with boba from when I visited Suzhou 5 years ago. I live in the US though. My penis. An all purpose tool. It is not particularly good at anything it does. Has a hammer on it that splits into a wire cutter's pliers. Compared to a leatherman, not super helpful to have on hand. It fails as a hammer, as a pliers, as a cutter, even the knife, screwdriver attachments etc that pull out are so bulky that using any of them isn't great compared to say a Swiss army knife. I carry a Leatherman on hand too, but, it was a gift from daughter, grandson who find me, handy, because I fix stuff for them. So I always have it on me as a memento. As a memento, not useless. Always makes me think of the red green show. If they don't find you handsome, they can at least find you handy. I have a key on my keychain that isn't mine. When my sister was in hospice we went to clean out her house and found that key on the end table next to her couch. So we figured it was important. It didn't fit any of the doors or anything we could find in her house. When we asked her what it went to, she was too far gone on pain meds to answer. She died in 2008 but I've still got that key. Just in case I ever run into a lock that it fits. A love omemori I bought a month before last Christmas. My crush died the week before Christmas. I always carry a tub of hummus in my bag. Every morning, I get a fresh ready-made tub of hummus from the fridge. And carry it in my backpack. I work a 9 to 5 job in a small remote office. With only a single nasty sandwich restaurant within a reasonable distance. I am hungry very often. And beat my cravings with this hummus over the course of the day. Roughly a year ago, on a Friday, me and some colleagues decided to drive into town for some afterwork beers. We had just signed a new client, and felt like celebrating. Of course, one beer became three, and three became ten. One by one my colleagues left, but I was wild and in a hell of a party mood. I wandered into town, and ended up in another lively bar I knew. It was a gay bar, but to be honest it never really bothered me. I love gay guys, and for some weird reason they love me. They're just a lot of fun ya know? Anyway, this drunken Friday night, I was there buying a drink, and a really buff guy started chatting me up. I'm a relatively attractive dude, so I am used to it. I politely turned him down, but he was having none of it. Have you ever tried kissing a guy? He asked. Of course I hadn't, which I shyly admitted to him. He suggested we try a small peck, 
just to try, a one-off experience, so to speak. As a curious guy the first love new experiences. And obviously I was hella drum -kay. I agreed, the peck became a smooch. And the smooch quickly became a makeout session. Before I knew it, the guy was bringing me up to his apartment, he conveniently lived right above the bar. As I took off his pants, he announced that he was a giver and not a taker. It barely surprised me, he was so buff and handsome. No one could turn him down. I agreed, and bent down, ready for the woohoo. The pain that followed was unbearable, no pun intended. He was so big, it could hardly fit. Do you have lube? I asked, tears trickling down my cheeks. He answered he did not. We tried using soap, to no avail. We tried water, but it made everything drier. This is when I remembered about my tub of hummus, which we agreed to try as last resort. And boy, was it successful. I still carry that tub of hummus, but it has never been used in that manner since again.